Speckworm is a, a really interesting plant. Physiologically, really, really interesting. Um, it's, it's got something called CAM photosynthesis, um, which allows it to sequester carbon. In other words, take in carbon dioxide during the day and at night, which is, which is quite a unique property. With speckworm, it's, it's really cool that, that all of the plant is, is useful. Um, the roots contain a lot of carbon, they store a lot of carbon. The roots allow infiltration into the soil from rainfall events and also in the leaves where we get a, a lot of water. And that's why, you know, for us, even as humans, we can eat speckworm. It's really highly palatable. Yeah, so the whole plant is, is useful. My name is Craig Shelter Douglas and I'm the environmental manager here at Quindwe Private Game Reserve. Speckworm is probably the most important plant because um, it, it occurred over millions of hectares in this area and um, a lot of those areas um, were where um, the, the, the original goat and, and, and mohair industry driven farmers came and they didn't have the knowledge that we have today of, of what sustainable farming practices were in this environment and so we start losing soil function and we started getting a lot more bare ground which gets baked in the sun all day so you know we don't have water holding anymore and any rain that does fall just runs off the surface or forms erosion and so we see this sort of cascading effect whereby the function of, of this landscape is no longer what it used to be. We've got millions of hectares of degraded thicket which used to contain speckworm and um, the only way to really start the process of restoration throughout this sort of landscape and at the regional level would be to use speckworm to start getting that, that ecosystem function back. Yeah, so this is a, a newly planted uh, speckworm cutting. It was planted about five minutes ago. And um, yeah, it's, uh, this has gone through its harvest process, its hardening process. And now the, the team, as you can see behind us, have gone and um, dug the hole and it's, it's been planted in the ground and then it's been um, filled in afterwards and compacted a little bit around it. You know, 85 to 90% of those cuttings will, will survive and grow into, into big mature speckworm. So that's the, that, that in itself is, is the kind of key goal of what we're trying to do here. In this project, we've got a planting plan for five years. Um, we, we've been going for just under three months so far and we've planted 350,000 trees. Um, and over five years, that, that's eight million speckworm. That's excluding the other species that we also nursery propagating that we'll, we'll bring back into the matrix at a later stage. But we're looking at about a 30 year restoration period um, for this project. We're very fortunate that we've got a great team of, of people all um, employed locally from, from communities within and, and around the game reserve um, who have really bought into this idea of, of restoring this land and, and, and creating jobs through the process. When we look at the, the problem we're facing as a species with overpopulation of people, the sort of anthropogenic drivers that are putting pressure on a lot of our, our wildlife and our wild spaces and protected areas, the end goal of these kind of projects is to, is to grow our, our wilderness areas. It's a really long-term project, but with the end goal of creating more suitable habitats for things like black rhino and, um, and cheetah and other animals that are, have really really been um, constrained by the amount of land that's available for them to exist on.